Yeah. No, that's it. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Actually, I'm going to ask Yancy, please, if you could please walk us through. <laughs> now, we, we are continuing this whole mudslinging fest <laughs> between Red Bull and Mercedes, and now the result is that... It's no longer mudslinging. It's no longer... It's like rear wing slinging. This is now. for real. This yeah. is... This is carbon fiber uh, slinging. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like what happened with uh, Ferrari's cheating engine when it all started. Go ahead. So you have now, and this is the only point of reference that I have. You have now Red Bull, which is actually competing with Mercedes at the top, mm -hmm. much like a little bit. <laughs> no, they are. I, I think I <laughs> listen. The reason why Red Bull hasn't won more races, I think, is their fault. To be honest with you, but we can go into that later. Um, so when Ferrari had their cheating engine, obviously they were the only engine. I, wow. I appreciate, I appreciate okay. he's acknowledging yes, he's the cheating engine. Acknowledging okay. That way. They, everybody found it weird that Ferrari was all of a sudden faster. They had a better engine than the Mercedes engine, which has been the, the engine, the creme de la creme of all engines during this hybrid era. So now all of a sudden Red Bull is just as fast as Mercedes even with the rule changes, right? And they started looking at the video a little bit closer. And then Lewis Hamilton with the bombshell after oh the Spanish Grand Prix, I think we met, we covered this last last week, um, we did said that the, the, the wing tends to bend backwards, almost uh, uh, give it, he said, some people say a tenth, I think Hamilton said three tenths. It, it gives a straight speed, yes, or like speed. a time around the lap. Yeah, well, it, an extra an extra time okay. around the lap. So what happens is that the wing flexes backwards. So if this is like the the. Let me see. This is the the plane the uh, the end plate of the wing. <laughs> it flexes down, and the wind is going this way. It flexes down this way, so it basically just reduces the drag. So like the a car, yeah, DRS effect. Like yeah, exactly. So the car could go faster down the street. Jeez, can um, I can I jump in here? Yeah, go ahead. I want to jump in here. Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> as the uh, engineer here. <laughs> no, the so what affects drag is the cross sectional area coming where the wind is coming, right? So imagine sticking your hand out of your car and you turn your hand sideways like this, right? The wind is pushing your hand back, and and you get all that drag, what we'll call downforce. You know, if you tilt it your hand will push down as well. Mm -hmm. Now, if your hand, there's less force, the more you twist your hand, the more wind Blind is... It. Right. The more wind is passing in a more direct angle, allowing you to not have that cross-sectional area face the oncoming wind. So what ends up happening is you just have less... It, it's a way of tricking, I guess, the fluid dynamics so that you're you're having less drag on the car, and it obviously... Less drag means your your forces on your car are making you go faster. You're picking up more. So basically, if you put your face in the wind, your 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 face flaps less. <laughs> That's why I'm bald, <laughs> <laughs> so I could go faster in straight. And how about Yance? <laughs> His beard is too thick. His beard is too thick. This, this is not an aerodynamic device. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry, I interrupted you. So no. So all right. So. Well, gave like a super, you know. Yeah, cross sectional simple. wind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm still confused by what he was trying to say, but okay. No, <laughs> I, especially with you. I I get it. I, you got it, right? Me too. Let me I, mansplain it again. I think. <laughs> no. I think I got it. So, uh, as the thing is that a lot of people have been talking about it in the paddock. And they've also noticed, that FIA took a look at it, and they also noticed that it wasn't just Red Bull that's trying to do this. So now they have invoked a clause in the rules. Um, let's see, where is this thing? It's section, section, it's Article 3.9.9 it? of the yes. Technical Regulations. There you go. That that's permits <clears throat> it to f introduce further load deflection tests on any part of the car it deems fit. There it is. Okay. Yes. So where, where do I get the the rule book that they have? Do you guys have an official they copy? It, of they, sh they should have it on the web. You know how the college textbooks are really expensive. That one is. <laughs> you gotta go through McGraw Hill. <laughs> McGraw Hill, and they'll, they'll hook you up. My sister will hook me up. So, that. Um, <laughs> so on June fifteenth, which is around where, where the, what the the French Grand Prix basically. Yeah. 
Uh, June fifteenth, they're going to introduce new tests to. Um, to the week before the French one. Yeah. Well, they're gonna intro- they're gonna be testing it more often to see what you know if there's any discrepancies, and it gives t- the teams time to make sure that this is not happening. So it's basically what they did with Ferrari in the fuel flow meters. Let's see if they come up with something. Now, the most interesting part about that, though, is if, obviously, just the way they brought in the um, the technical directive on the engines, and then all of a sudden Ferrari was slower at, at the U.S. Grand Prix that mm-hmm. year, let's see if the Red Bulls are going to be slower. But, okay, obviously the, the protest or whatever you want to call it is being focused on Red Bull. Who else? Are they going to clarify this? Are they going to seal it? You know, because you just said right now that... We will find out. Not, they're not the only team doing it. So why you say Alpha Tower is doing it too? I don't know. But, I mean, obviously, the only they're, they're going to focus on Red Bull because they're the ones fighting at the top. Mm-hmm. So Mercedes has a... Will it affect do? McLaren? Like, you know, I'm talking about like... Yeah, but Mercedes, Mercedes is like on politics, yeah. <laughs> on strategy. Now they, they, they got to push bro. all these other areas because, you know, there's a threat. But... No, it's. I'm sorry, but what I'm saying is like, but they're still fast. So like, yeah, you come on with the something. No, no, not not the rebel, but I'm talking about Mercedes. That for example, the cheating engine with Ferrari made them develop the engine to go even to catch up, you mm-hmm. know, without cheating. So, it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like without cheating, so they made it to compete. Now Red Bull comes up with this thing. Obviously, they have a Red Bull needs to get that like we always say the complete package to be able to win these races. Mm-hmm. And Mercedes is still there, like you know. Come get me, come get me. Like they're re- well, and and I think I hope, that, and I'll sorry. be honest with you, they haven't been the fastest car every weekend, and the and they've won what three out of four races. So out of and out of three out of four races, they've won it. Most of them have been, well, I think two of them on strategy. So, like, what how much did now? we how much did we use to praise Red Bull for their strategy? How they look all the time? They were they were top notch, and we would even say that they were better than Mercedes at some yep. point. How's that looking this year? I just hope that we don't get like a. You know, like a, like a book in 10 years saying juice, how the Mercedes engine was on the juice or, you know, steroids or something like that. Yeah, I was just thinking that would be crazy. Right? You imagine that? <laughs> that would be really crazy. So what I want to point out is that that would be great for Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Monaco this week. So Yes. Right. Wait, wait. So the wing so will now allow them to pick up less drag. Yeah, cross sectional wins. Um, no, what I'm trying to say is that they'll be able to shed. They won't be able to shed the drag as much on the straights, right? So you have Monaco, not really going to be an issue. No. Azerbaijan, that's a that's huge, definitely an issue. That that's a huge bonus towards Red Bull. I think most of that track is a straight. Yeah, but then look at this after when the testing starts coming into play, which is really like a week after Monaco. France, that's a lot of straights there. Yeah, Austria times two. You need your high speed. You need your low. Um, and France is a Mercedes track. Your low downforce. Austria could be a Mercedes track. What's yeah. after that? Silverstone. <laughs> yeah. So there's a potential where they're all high speed tracks. There's a potential where Red Bull could be really screwed if this is really <laughs> giving them an advantage. I, yo, you, you know what, even, man? We're even going through this right that? now, right? We're going through this right now, and they're they've literally brought this up at the time where the schedule is going to favor them. Imagine they had picked it up for Azerbaijan too. Like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> I'm just saying this could not have been any better timing. No, so Bravo, could you imagine, Mercedes. Could you imagine if Mercedes, Mercedes even thought of that? Like, how do we twist this around so it could always, obviously, always favor us? But like, let's do it this week. So there's no time to do it this weekend. Blah 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 blah. And it could fall in our lap. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know. <laughs> They're even champions at politics. Or are we thinking about it in reverse? Would it be better if they have a higher downforce setup and then they lose? A, I don't know. It's, it's going to be – this whole year is going to be a lot of fun between these two teams. Yeah, on and off the track, especially off the track. Very exciting. Yeah. So Because honestly, the first few races have been very good just because they have been able to fight each other at the top. Mm-hmm. Regardless of who's won, mm-hmm. they have all been entertaining, even a – even a boring race like what was it? Um, Portugal. Portugal. They uh, they still made it kind of interesting. Or even Barcelona. Barcelona of all races, which we thought was going to be a snooze fest, yeah. was actually an interesting race because we had that battle at the top. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. And some overtaking too. 
Yeah, <laughs> believe it or not, man. Speak. Hey guys, this is Wellington from the Jump to Start Racing crew. Before we start, I want to make sure to tell you to destroy that like button and to make sure to hit subscribe to be up to date with our episodes and clips. Please make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Our handle on both platforms is at jumpthestartf1. See you there.